Presented by Caltech. Welcome. Uh, thank you, Chris, and thank you for the Caltech Alumni Association for organizing today's celebration. 20 years ago, Cassini headed to Saturn. It now prepares for its grand finale, looping through the rings of Saturn before plunging into the planet's atmosphere on September 15th, later this year. 40 years ago, the Voyager spacecraft launched with only a few years' time horizon expected, but the voyages are still going strong. One probe has exited our solar system, with the second to follow soon, both continuing to transmit data bit by bit by bit. <laughs> 80 years ago, the Institute held its first annual seminar day. This tradition continues here and now with reports on new vistas and new findings and surprises to come, but most of all enduring, demonstrating the enduring commitment of the Caltech community to learning and discovery, to sending probes, if you will, to discover the unexpected. It is the commitment to absolute excellence and intellectual fearlessness that positions Caltech in the top rank of research universities. And it is the contributions of our alumni across all sectors of society that constitutes Caltech's most profound influence on the world. Today, we recognize two very special alums with the Distinguished Alumni Award. Caltech's Distinguished Alumni Award is the highest honor the Institute bestows upon a graduate. It is awarded in recognition of achievements of noteworthy value and careers of distinctive accomplishment. These two honorees highlight the diverse impact Caltech alumni have on academia, industry, and public service. Regina Dugan is Vice President of Engineering at Facebook, where she leads a team called Building 8, charged to develop new technologies that will, quote, connect everyone on Earth. Dr. Dugan and, excuse me, earned bachelor's and master's degrees in mechanical engineering from Virginia Tech University. After a brief stint at NASA, where she received her first patent for a system to refuel satellites in orbit, she came to Caltech for her PhD in mechanical engineering. Since then, Dr. Dugan has built a career at the nexus of basic and applied research with a specialty in moonshots. In 1996, she served as a program manager at the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, where she was charged with developing sensor technologies that could be used to detect landmines. In 2000, she continued her career with a shift to the private sector, where she co-founded both a security solutions company and an investment firm, and served as the president and CEO of each. In 2009, she returned to DARPA as its director, the 19th director and the first woman to hold this position, emphasizing breakthrough technologies in true Caltech fashion. Dr. Dugan even established the DARPA forward cell in Afghanistan, the agency's first full-time forward presence in a combat zone since the Vietnam War, personally visiting Afghanistan five separate times. After completing her tenure at DARPA, Dr. Dugan moved to Google's Motorola Mobility as Senior Vice President for Advanced Technology and Projects. There, she applied the grueling and disciplined pace of development she instituted at DARPA to take innovative technologies from the drawing board to commercial production. She oversaw the development of biometrics and security projects, as well as efforts to build highly modular mobile phones and digitally capture and convert surroundings into 3D virtual worlds. Last year, Dr. Dugan joined Facebook as the team leader for Building 8. 
At a recent conference in San Jose, she revealed that Facebook is working on two ambitious brain-computer interface projects, including a system that would allow users to type with their thoughts, and one that would allow users to hear through vibrations on their skin. Dr. Dugan emphasizes that great risks must be taken in order to achieve great things, saying, failure is part of creating new and amazing things. We cannot both fear failure and make amazing things. We honor Dr. Regina Dugan for her sustained record of leadership and innovation in technology and business. Wow, thank you, thank you so much. Never in my life did I think my name would appear on any list that also included Carver Mead, Gordon Moore, Ivan Sutherland, and Frank Capra. <laughs> I mean, what the, seriously? I mean, this is awesome. I feel a bit like the nerd version of Cuba Gooding Jr. at the Oscars, for those of you who remember that. Uh, when I first learned about the award, I had three competing thoughts. First, this could be really embarrassing if it's a mistake. Um, is it a mistake? I mean, it happens even at the Oscars. Um, second, I better get to work. Uh, I'll make a silent film comedy about VLSI and new GUIs, and I'll make it so that it has twice as many minutes approximately every two years. <laughs> and third, maybe I should stop now. I might be at the pinnacle, and it's only going to be downhill from here. <laughs> Actually, I'm not sure which of the three felt more scary. What I do know is that that list, that list of 256 men and women, is a testament to the quality of this university. Caltech has been many things to many people, including me. What it has not been is easy. Caltech was not easy to finish. The work demanded more of me than I thought possible. It was intellectually challenging. It was scientifically disorienting at times. It required me to think differently and to earn the confidence through imagination and the grit of hard work to question conventional wisdom because that's the only way to make new things. I learned that the future is not some inevitability with us as passive participants idly watching it unfold, but rather the future is what we choose to make, and we choose to make what we believe in. And in this sense, we are all architects and engineers, artists and creators of the future. Caltech was also not easy to change. Sometimes this is good. History and tradition, they form the fabric of an institution, create pride. But it can also be dangerous because pride can sometimes become self-congratulation, create rigidness. And all the best organizations I've had the great privilege to be part of know that demonstrating their pride by challenging the notion that their past is what makes them great is what they should do. Instead, what they choose to do is use the history of accomplishment to give them the confidence to adapt and to change. They focus always on a future that can be greater than their past, and some disruption is encouraged. 
While I was a graduate student here, I found my voice as an advocate for women, women generally, and women in science and engineering in particular. I helped to organize rallies on campus. We couldn't call them protests. That was considered a little too inflammatory. Change was more than a little difficult, but we got some really important things done. Now, I think it's fair to say that as a graduate student, I was considered a little, maybe a little more than a little, <laughs> disruptive. <laughs> but I'm standing here today to say that disruptive is often the very path to distinguished. And finally, throughout my time at Caltech, it was not easy to ask for help, but I did. It's true that many people helped me along the way, my parents, teachers, friends. Even still, I prided myself on the kind of self-sufficiency that comes from clarity of thought, a strong will, practiced skill, and determination. Lots and lots of determination. After all, it's how I got to Caltech in the first place. But Mary Kennedy, who is here today, taught me that others could and would serve as a different kind of supporter. She was an unwavering advocate and also at times a fierce protector. She taught me that people would help me even at cost to themselves if I would let them. And that they would do so because sometimes the most important things we have to accomplish require all of us to take a stand together. So finishing, disrupting, asking for help, all three felt scary and definitely not easy. But here's the thing. I don't say this because I somehow expected it to be easy. I didn't ask for easy and I certainly didn't come to Caltech for easy. I came for meaning and purpose in my work and in my life, and I found it here. In part, because the hard is precisely what makes it great. So thank you. I'm humbled and honored. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.